Hi, I'm Owen and welcome to SMA Talents 10 Minutes With. Today I'll be chatting with Ian Arbor, music composer of film, TV, documentaries and video games, whose soundtrack with Dave Rowntree for the new Netflix show, The One, that came out on March 12th, has just reached number one on Netflix UK and number three in the world. We caught up with Ian a little bit earlier to talk about life as a composer and scoring one of Netflix's favourite shows. Being a classically trained cello player and pianist, how did your journey with music begin? Um, so my journey began when I was five years old. Um, that's when I started playing the cello. Wow. Um, so I can't really remember music not being a part of my life. Um, obviously, I can't remember that far back anyway, but I can certainly remember playing the cello when I was five or six. Um, and basically I started playing in orchestras uh, probably around six or seven. Um, and I played in orchestras, you know, all the way through my childhood, through my teens, all the way to university. Um, so I kind of went from classically trained cello player to piano player when I was 10 or 11, when I kind of discovered that you could you could play cooler music on the piano. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then um, I started to play um, and produce rock bands when I was like 12, 13, 14, quite young, um, and kind of introduced to rock music and guitars. So yeah, the journey the journey has gone through all sorts of different genres, from classical to rock to jazz, um, and now I'm a film composer. I think I remember reading somewhere that Han I think it was Hans Zimmer as well who was like, who's like almost got, not necessarily like started off in a rock band, but I heard also he was yeah. kind of getting like into like rock and stuff as well as well as sort. He of did, he kind. did, and that's and it's very frequently happens. Danny Elfman, um, you know, Trent Reznor, Atticus Ross, Nine Inch Nails, Hans Zimmer. Yeah. Um, it's quite common. Um, I mean, I, you know, I was not in a decent rock band. I just played, you know, I played rock music and I recorded rock music when I was a teenager. Yeah. But I think what you learn, especially these days, maybe not back in John Williams's day, but um, these days, what you learn from the production side and the recording side um, of the composing of writing music is essential. You have to be, you're not just a composer, really, you're a producer and a composer. So I think that that's why someone, you know, like someone like Alex Ross and Trent Reznor coming from their highly produced rock and electronic music, they they had a unique production sound, producing sound and recording sound, not just a, a unique writing sound. Same with Hans Zimmer, you know, it's not just in the notes, it's a lot of it's in the production and the sounds of his synthesizers. And... Yeah. So uh, you worked with Dave Roundtree composing scores for the TV show, like the capture and the motion picture Bross after the screaming stops. Um, how did you guys come about these collaborations together? Um, so Dave's partner, uh, Michelle DeVries, is a music supervisor. Um, and she, she, I've worked on quite a few projects with her um, and she kind of gave me my first break in documentaries, which was um, I Am Bolt, which is the Usain Bolt documentary. Mm -hmm. And um, Dave had dabbled in film and TV as well. He'd, he'd done a bit of work for the production company I was working with, mm -hmm. and they were producing another documentary about Mo Farah. Right, yeah, yeah. So, so we were, it was, I, I heard about the project and Michelle had mentioned it, um, and I think, you know, I can't remember exactly what she said, but um, there wasn't a composer on board yet, but she was thinking about getting Dave involved, and she was asking me if I could get involved. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was working on Iron Bolt at the time. Um, and I'm not sure exactly what happened, but at some point there was a trailer for it and Dave wrote some music for it. And then Universal came back and said, this is great, we love the percussion and, and um, kind of electronic uh, thing you've got going on there, but can we maybe throw some orchestral stuff in there? So oh. Michelle was like, oh, that's Ian's thing. So maybe we can get Ian to do some music on the trailer with Dave and we can score the trailer for the Mo Farah film, great. Um, so I did that and then they loved what we did and then basically everything just, all the stars aligned for us to co-score this Mo Farah documentary, um, partly because there was, it's the tightest deadline I've ever had ever on any projects and I've had some tight deadlines. We had four, we had five days to score a feature documentary and actually ended up being four because the cut didn't arrive on the Monday, it arrived on the Tuesday, so we had till Friday. <laughs> Oh so exactly, God. it was it was hands on our heads sort of thing. I think the process of um, 
how uh, of, of going through those four days a really intense kind of relationship and forcing ourselves to be able to work with each other yeah you know it was lucky that we get on and we have very compatible um characters mm. and we come from completely different backgrounds and approaches yeah. so it just works you know we're bringing something new to the table both of us when we attack a different scene and we discovered very quickly how you know within a few days what each of our um each of our kind of skill set was which was so different from each other mm -hmm. so kind of going from that we then with the same production company did the bros documentary which exploded went crazy um and then we ended up doing i think it was after that then we did the capture um and then we were really you know honing in on our skills we were we both knew exactly what our what we were best at and we were kind of really um really just you know at the peak of our collaboration I think during the capture and then after that last year we did 2020 uh, during Covid we did a Netflix show called The One together um, and again it's it, it's in a genre where we're we know it's going to be like okay it's Dave's percussion electronics um, completely bonkers uh, unique approach to all of that and then my kind of more melody driven uh, cello and, and maybe a more organic instruments approach. When you're working on a film, it's intense. It's it's your life for that, especially if it's, you know, a feature or a TV series that's got strict deadlines. You kind of, you live and breathe the project and it's a very close working relationship. And I think it's the same if you're um, two composers collaborating and, you know, it can be, it can be, you're going to argue with each other. You're going to shout at each other at points and it has to be someone that you're happy to do that with and take it from. Yeah. And I think me and Dave are like bang on perfect. We understand each other. We can read when the other one's pissed off. We can read each other's <laughs> reactions to things. We're swapping cues and scenes back and forth all the time on these projects. And none of us, uh, and we've, uh, it's true, we've never said, you know, that cue's crap, but don't like what you've done or don't like that, don't like that. It's, it's very, very rarely anything like that because it's a case of, okay, this is, this is interesting. It's either that's great, Dave, that's brilliant, or Ian, that's brilliant, or this is interesting. I'm not sure it quite works, is what I'm thinking. This is how Dave was saying it. Um, but I'm not, I can't say that. I have to go and work out what does work so that I can say, but how about this? And then you put that on the table. And then, you know, nine times out of 10, the other one goes, that's great, that's it, you know? Yeah. So it's kind of um, using each other and a collaboration to kind of um, almost as a, a uh, little rivalry to, to do the best work we can on each scene, but we're working together. Could you tell me a little bit about how you would go about composing a new piece of work or score? I mean, yeah, that that differs not only from project to project, but also at different periods of my career. Um, for me personally, it's, it's inspired and driven by either story or visuals. And more often than not, what I, what I'll have some sort of visual um, so a scene maybe, or you know, some of the dailies from the from filming, or an early cut of the film. Um, sometimes script, but but usually some sort of visual, and that kind of says a lot already. The tone, the way it's filmed, um, the genre, the style, the dialogue, all of this kind of drives um, ideas. Personally, I like to whether it needs a big theme or not. I like to start with um, experimenting with some melodies around character trying out different orchestrations and um, basically what will happen is on a film or TV series or documentary, pretty much anything, I'll start to write and, and have several different kind of suites or pieces of music that are maybe influenced by a scene or a character or a location, but not necessarily directly to picture. So the director or the producers can um, feed back to me and say, I love this or I love that, or we dropped this on that scene and it worked really well. And I'll continue writing as the edit evolves, the music evolves, they both influence each other. The editor's dropping in pieces of music and using it as temp, which is like temporary music in place while they edit. Um, so it's, it's, it's kind of win-win in that you get to experiment and, and understand what the director's tastes are um, and also understand the language and how you'll be working together. And also usually, you know, nine times out of ten, within a few um, suites of music, you've come up with something that the director really likes and, and says that's going to work really great for this character or this location. <laughs> you've composed a range of scores for different genres of TV and film, such as like, such as, you know, like dramas, action thrillers, 
comedies, uh, horror and documentaries. Um, do you have a favorite genre of TV or film to compose a score for? Like a, like a like genre wise? Mm. Yeah. I, I don't think I do. And I probably would have had a favorite genre when I started out. I've always said that I'd loved, I'd love to do a period drama. Um, mm. And I've never done one. So my favorite, my favorite genre is is something I haven't done um, because you know I'd love to be able to write really kind of melodic and um, beautiful score uh, using an orchestra because um, generally you know everything I've done does have that that um, motif theme melody uh, element which I'm really proud of and I love doing like the capture you know we have. Uh, melodies and motifs for the different characters that are used in many different ways, not necessarily traditionally, um, and pretty much the same for everything else I've done.